Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you a quick and easy way to paint your Space Marines Rhino. In this video, I'll show you how I painted my Rhino for the Space Wolves. And I used the same technique to paint not just the Rhinos, but also the Predator and the Razorbacks too. Here's the model I'll be using in the video, and I built this so that I could use it as a rhino or a razorback. I've also painted inside already. That video's up on the channel if you'd like to check that out. I'll pop a link at the end of this video so you can find it really easily. So here we go. So I've got it ready and in different parts so I can just swap it over. So this part would go on there for the rhino. I can have the hatch closed if I want to, and then I can also swap it over for the razorback. I've got a little magnet on here for the missile, so that can just go on and I can put it on either side depending on which option I go with too. So having all these different ways to put it together is great fun and gets you the most out of your model. I find all the bits stay on really easily and when you want to swap it between a Rhino or Razorback, you just take the bits off, put the new ones on and you're good to go. So right, let's get started painting this up and I'll show you the quick, easy techniques I use to do it. Before we do that though, I'd like to say a huge thank you to this month's sponsors who are making these daily videos possible. And I'll put their links in the comments section below. And if you can check those out, that's a great way to support the channel and help me to keep these videos coming. Once I'd primed the model with a standard Mechanicus Grey spray, I moved on to the Agrax Earthshade. And what I've done is taken some foam, cut a hole in that, and then that holds my pot nicely so it doesn't spill everywhere. I'm using this big dry brush from Citadel and I'm putting the Agrax Earthshade over the entire model. So I've been quite generous here, but not overly, I'm not completely flooding it, but I'm getting enough on there where I can cover all these panels and get it right into the recesses. I'll just speed it up so you can see it all coming together here. But nice even strokes all over make this really smooth. And then when you find in it's pooling too much on the flatter areas, just move it around a little bit. You might find it's better to do one side at a time, let that dry and then turn it over just so you can keep it flat when that paint is drying. For bits like the hatches here, I grab a big piece of blue tack and then I can hold on to that and get that painted again, going in those recesses, moving it round, making sure I get all the edges, the hinges and every little part of these pieces too. And then for these bits, you can just hold on to some of them, but all the different attachments that I showed you earlier, I just give them a nice generous coating of Agrax Earthshade too. Once that's fully dried, I took the layer Rust Grey paint this very vegan makeup brush, which has seen better days, but it's great for this rough and ready overbrushing technique. And I'm gonna load my paintbrush up, take a little bit of it off on some kitchen paper, but there's still quite a bit of paint on there. And then I'm just gonna almost dapple it on, rough it, roughly paint it, getting it all over. I'm not trying to get it into the recesses though, if I can help it. And I'm trying to go in like a downward stroke. So I'm trying to keep some of that shade and shadow from the Agrax Earthshade underneath, but I just want to give this a nice rough and ready coat over the top. And I just continue this all over the entire model. I don't worry if it goes on the tracks or any of the other parts because that's going to be covered later. So you can be really messy with this. And then once that's done and dried, it's going to look like this. So it doesn't look great at this stage, but we're going to do two more coats over it. I'll also lift this up and paint underneath too, unless you want to glue it down, of course. So then I go over the whole thing with another coat and then it's gonna go from the top one to the one you see at the bottom here. So a couple of coats like this using the same method gets you to a nice stage. So I go over it all again, getting right in there, making sure that first coat was completely dried and then just doing the same thing. And then once you've done two coats, you're gonna be left with something like this. So I'd let that dry and then I go over it a third and final time. But now I'm just picking out the areas that are more raised, that are gonna catch more of the light and just give them a little bit. So I'm not going over everything now, I'm just only going over the most raised areas. I've used this same technique on my Space Wolves as well, on the actual Marines themselves, and you can see a separate video on that if you'd like to check it out. Next, I took some base lead belcher and I've used quite a bit of water to wet it down. And then this gets it coated nicely all over the, the model, especially when you're doing tracks and things like that, because we're gonna do some dry brushing over this later on. So it doesn't have to be absolutely thick and perfect. And I'm just gonna give it one nice coat of this watered down lead belcher, getting right in there into the wheels as well, making sure all the parts of the tracks 
get a nice coating. Then I'm going to pick out all the areas like the spikes on the front. Now, usually you just put this on the razor back, but I've glued it on because I just think it suits the nature of the space wall with some kind of claw at the front of the rhino works for me as well. I'll pick out all these cables too, giving them a coat and then so that'll go all over the metal areas and then just going around the model then picking out little pieces like the vents up here i'm using the same big brush as well and then going for the smoke launchers and anything else you think needs a little bit of metal like this little section here and then you've got the chains that you can put on so i put these on as little extra pieces if you're not been doing this for the space wolves then you could you probably wouldn't have these little chains on the sides like this and then don't forget the weapons too and all those parts you've got separately. Pick out all the metal areas for those as well. Now it's time to grab some contrast black Templar. And this is going to go on the black sections of the weapons. You see I'm using quite a big brush to get this done. And uh, these square brushes are quite good for things like this. Then on to base Wraithbone. And this is going to go over all the different sections that have skulls. So I'll pick out those skulls, give it a nice coat. Just to water down a tiny bit. You could do two coats if you want, if you want to water it down a bit more. I'm just going for tabletop ready here. So I generally just do one coat because I'm also going to put some Agrax Earthshade over this later on. I'll pick out all the little fangs, horns, rune stones, and also this banner here at the front and give that a coat too. Then it's a base Rune Lord Brass. And this is going to pick out all the little areas as well, like the metal around this wolf motif here and so just again going around the, med the model picking out any bits you think need that color gore grunter fur in the contrast paint is now perfect for doing all these little wolf tails so they're going to be painted with one coat and dry brushed when it's dried and that's all you're going to do on that nice and easy back to the contrast black templar again and this is going to go on the wolf head that you can see here so I'm doing that in a nice solid black. I think that works really well against the Rune Lord Brass. Then I took some Blood for the Blood God technical paint. And I'm just picking out these little sensors on the weapons. I think this works nicely for that. And some layer Lothurn Blue, a beautiful colour. And I'm going to pop that on the viewing ports of this little hatch. So I just go all the way around giving it one coat. Again, you could wet it down and use two if you want. Now it's back to the Agrax Earthshade and I'm going to put that over the whole weapon. So all the areas painted with lead belcher and black gets a coat of that. So I'm not worried about it going over the black. And then I'm also picking out different areas here. So all the metalwork, the rune stones, giving that a coat. I don't mind if a little bit goes on the tank. I'm not being super careful here. Covering all the little motifs that we painted earlier on, including that wolf as well. And then put a little bit over the banner that I've glued to the front of the rhino. Put some on the cables as well. Basically anything you've painted with that lead belcher earlier or the Rune Lord brass is going to get a coat of this. Then go a bit heavier on the tracks. I want this to be going right into all those recesses. Don't forget the edges and inside as well. So really work it in there. I'm using this large brush which makes it really easy and then cover the spikes on the front as well. Now we're going to do some highlighting. So I take some layer Fenrisian grey and I've got this dry brush again and I'm just going to dip that in there and then I'm going to work that paint into the bristles. So you can see how far I'm going in. I'm just working it into the bristles on some kitchen towel and I'm going to try and get as much paint as I can off this and then we'll do some edge highlighting. Now having this flat brush is really great for just going along and picking out the edges all over the model. And so I'm making sure to move the model, not myself. And that makes this a lot easier so I can keep myself in the same position and just catch all those edges nice and easy. You have to be a little bit careful on this part here because you don't want to get it on the flat, smoother sections if you can help it. We're going to do another stage of dry brushing later on so you can hide some of it if you do make a mistake. And um, with this tabletop, ready kind of technique it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect you can see i just rubbed that off with my finger there so i'm just moving it catching those edges and this is a really nice way to get a quick and easy highlight and you're letting the model do all the work for you really again move that model so that you can keep those strokes nice and even and have lots of control now the model on the left, I've done the edge eye highlighting to, and the one on the right, I've gone a stage further, and put some frosting on it. So let's do that now. This is optional, but I think it works certainly for the space wolves. So I took some white paint, and he's going to do, and then I take my very vegan makeup brush, work it into the bristles, 
rub that paint off on the kitchen towel like we did before and then I'm going to go all over the model now and this is going to give that frosty snow effect. So I want, wanted my tanks to be quite clean looking for this and so I just want to give the effect of frost really but this is also going to act as a highlight. So I'll speed it up here and just show you I'm going all over it, picking out those edges, even going over the tracks as well and so I'm imagining it going through not so much snow but just being super cold that it's making this metal on the outside really frosted up and then I go a bit heavier on the front and I'm trying to imagine I'm brushing this in the direction that the wind would be hitting it as it goes through the battlefield. So I go all over the model doing this and there you go a bit heavier at the front so that's to give that effect of just more of the snow and the, the cold hitting it as it's moving along. And this is the final stage in the process. So once this is done, and don't forget all the parts that go on the top as well, the little hatches and everything. Once that's finished, the model is complete. And here's our Rhino, completely finished, painted to a nice tabletop ready standard with just a few techniques, really quick, really easy to do. And if you've got a few to do at the same time, you can get them done really fast. Here's the three I painted at the same time, the Predator and my two Rhinos, which I've also made as Razorbacks as well. So I've got that option when I play the game. But I'm really happy with how they turned out. Nice, quick techniques, really easy to do. And I think if you've not painted a vehicle before, then I think this is a nice way to do it. And these were the first proper vehicles I've ever painted. And I did them back in January when I did my Space Wolves Army Challenge. So I was a bit nervous going into it, painting the big models. But to be fair, it's pretty easy. You know, you've got lots of big panels to paint. You've got these nice crisp edges to run along. And so, yeah, it's easier than it looks. So don't be afraid if you've never done it before. And following this guide, I think you'll be really happy with the results. And if you want to do different colours for the different chapters, then just follow the same thing, but don't do the white at the end. And I think you'll be happy with the results. Just that overbrush and then doing the edge highlighting, you get a nice crisp looking tank. That initial layer of Agrax Earthshade at the beginning is enough just to put a little bit of, of gunk and grime in those recesses too. So it just comes through underneath the other layers. And you, you could do it where you paint first and then do the shade. But I like to do it this way because I just found it's quite subtle as it comes through. And again, I want my tanks to be quite crisp looking. I don't want them to be really dirty. I want them to be well looked after. And so that was the style I was going for. I'm really happy with the results. These were great fun to build, paint and play. I was really surprised. I thought for older models that looked just like a brick, really, with some tracks on. But they were awesome. They were one of my favourite things from this whole experience of building my Space Wolves. Really enjoy it. And yeah, I love playing with them. So hopefully you want to get some and give it a go yourself. And if you do, I recommend checking out Firestorm Games. I'll pop a link in the description below that will take you to their website. If you order from them before the 31st of August, you'll also save an additional 5% on the usual up to 20%. So some big savings to be made there. And you'll also support the channel as I get a small commission from every sale made through that link. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that this gave you some quick and easy tips to get your Rhino painted to a tabletop ready standard in no time. And if you enjoyed the video, please let me know down in the comments section below. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell too, so you can join me here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below.